Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. In the things they carried, Tim O'Brien begins his novel with a list of all the things that the infantrymen carried in Vietnam. It is a complete list of every item in his pack, all 60 plus pounds of the things that he and his fellow soldiers carried. At the end of his list, he writes, they carried all they could bear, and then some including a terrible awe of the silent power of the things they carried. His story is so much more than the things they carried. They also carried all of the realities of war and of the world into the place where they were, where they were dropped to fight. They carried the sky, he writes, the whole atmosphere, they carried it, the humidity, the monsoons, the stink of fungus and decay, they carried all of it, they carried gravity. Today is our day to inventory our list of the things that we carry, all of the things we carry, including the terrible awe of the silent power of things we carry. Today we lay them all out and we take a look at them we examine them. We wonder how these things, good and bad, have become part of the things we carry. Some of them are all too familiar. We have carried them for a lifetime. Some of the things we carry are delightful. They amaze us. As we look at them, we see the depth of our compassion and joy, our caring and our love. Some of the things we carry are troubling. Some of them are vexing. They have hitched a ride in our life and we want to find a way to face them and then encourage them to leave us alone or to take a healthier form if they're going to stick around with us. Delightful or troubling, good or bad, we have to learn to embrace the things we carry and integrate them into our lives, or we have to learn to drop them somewhere where they will do no harm. We have to learn to embrace ourselves and our imperfections and see them change from difficult disturbances which create difficult emotions and sometimes physical pain to healed and helpful parts for our journey ahead. The things that we carry can help us or hinder us. They can heal us or hurt us. They can be our lifelong friends or our former enemies transformed into friends. They expose us to ourselves and sometimes to others. They reveal us as true or false, real or fake. They may prey on us one day, and we pray for them to leave us alone the next day. The things we carry are all parts put together in us for better or for worse. On this day of confession and contrition, you and I are called by God to do the hard work of acknowledging and looking at all the things we carry, the ways we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Today, we are called to take a deep breath and take time to reflect, to repent, and to begin 40 days of turning and returning to God. Today, we begin the journey back to love. I always think of John Builder on Ash Wednesday. John of blessed memory was a member of my first congregation, Bethany United Church of Christ in Cleveland, Ohio. 
John would regularly come up to me in the greeting line on Sunday morning after worship and tell me that he refused to pray our prayer of confession that day. This was a regular occurrence. He would say, I didn't do any of those things, so why would I ask God to forgive me for the things that I have not done? I would explain to him that this was a community prayer, that it was a corporate prayer, that we prayed together so that we could move forward together, receiving God's assurance of pardon and grace. But it didn't make a difference. <laughs> there was no convincing John to pray the prayer of confession. Although one day, a sliver of light cracked in there, and he told me that he did confess to God the things that he had done during the silent time of prayer. So one day, when I was finally alone with John, I asked him what he prayed in the time of silence. He said, that's between me and God, and it is none of your business. That was fair. I said, John, you're right, and you're wrong. Your personal confessions to God are really none of my business. That's truly between you and God. That's true. But you're wrong because it concerns me how it is with your soul. It concerns me how you are healing from whatever you prayed in silence. That's my business because I'm your pastor and because I love you and I care about you. And everyone at Bethany loves and cares about you. He said, well, it's nice that you care about my heart and soul. And that was the last time we talked about confession. In our scripture passages today, Joel and Jesus are nice. They're very concerned about each one of our hearts and souls. The prophet Joel writes that God is calling us to return to God with all of our heart through fasting and weeping and mourning God is calling us to rend our hearts, to open our hearts to God's gracious and merciful love. The journey back to love begins in confession and contrition. For us, our Lenten journey begins in this winter of discontent and will move to a springtime of resurrection joy. While the earth appears as a winter frozen tundra today, it is really hard to imagine that the crocuses and the flowering buds of the tulip tree and the green grass lay buried beneath this snow. But they are there. They're waiting for their season to be born again. They're waiting to rise and to shine again. What begins in winter fasting today will end in spring feasting at Easter. We can't run through this journey with our heavy boots and snowshoes on. We can trudge forward together. Ash Wednesday is a perfectly suited day for trudging. Like my dog Charlie and the children in our neighborhood, we can dig down into the snow, jump down into its deepness, pull our heads out of the snow we just stuck our heads into and leap in this cold winter, but we're still waiting for spring. While Joel takes us into the fasting, the weeping, and the mourning of first steps into Lent, Jesus chooses to take a slightly different path on this opening day of our Lenten journey. Jesus warns us not to wave our gifts of the way that we give to people in front of other people. He warns us and tells us not to be hoarders of our money and our resources. He tells us not to pray out loud on street corners and be obnoxious, pietistic pilgrims. Maybe John Builder was right. And not to look at dismal, not to look dismal looking while we're fasting or tell other people during our fast how hungry we are today. Twice, he uses, three times he uses the phrase, don't be like the hypocrites. The word Hypocrites has its roots in the Greek theater, as you probably know. Hypocrites were stage actors who wore large masks to identify their characters on stage. The Greek word took on an extending meaning to refer to any person who was wearing a figurative mask and pretending to be somebody or something they were not. 
and the French and English picked up on the word in 13th century religious texts to refer to someone who was pretending to be morally good or pious in order to deceive others. Today we know that hypocrites are those who act in contradiction to their stated beliefs or feelings. The people we should not be like, according to Jesus, and that's good teaching. It seems as though Jesus is more like the French and the English in this interpretation as he's calling us to be honest and forthright in our living and loving. He wants transparency. He wants honesty. He wants clarity in our care for the poor, in our prayer, in our fast, in our stewardship of resources. Like the Nike ad, Jesus just wants us to do this. Just do it. And so we begin today our journey back to love. I implore you to take this journey to heart. Figure out the things that you are carrying on the journey back to love. Look closely at the things that weigh you down and bring out the worst in you. Name them, claim their existence, and then either Find a way to integrate them and heal with them or let them go. Because we don't need the worst of us being brought out all the time. Hang on to the things that you carry which are beautiful and healing and hopeful. Let us step forward together in our journey back to love. And as we do, let's keep our eyes wide open. Let's keep our hearts wide open. Let's keep all of our senses open for the steps ahead. And in the spirit of John Builder, let's be grateful for everyone who truly cares about how it is with our soul, about how it is with our heart, about how it is with our love. So come, let us start the journey back to love. Amen.